Janet says we're ready to go. Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about dating in the Philippines. And I'm not going to tell you how to get a date, what apps to use. It's been trending on these Philippine YouTubers and a lot of different channels about how uh, Filipinos aren't into you, how much they're not really that interested in foreigners anymore. But for us older guys, I'm going to, I'm going to give you four types of Filipinas uh, that everybody's overlooking. And first, first I want to talk about you guys coming over here older by yourself who say, I'm not interested in dating. Well, if you're not interested in dating and you come over here and you find a permanent place to live, I'm going to suggest you get a maid. You're going to want to have some sort of companionship. You're going to definitely going to want somebody to help take care of you, take care of your home. Uh, cleaning a house here in the Philippines, not like cleaning a house back home. You know, it's, it's constant sweeping, constant mopping, uh, a lot of dust gets blown in. If you're by the beach, you get a lot of uh, salt from the seawater being close to the uh, ocean. A lot of sand might be blowing in. There's a lot of bugs in the houses. You're going to get lizards, uh, the, the geckos, the, the bigger ones. I don't even know what they're called. The cuckoos? What do you call them, Janet? The big lizards? Cook, cook. Janet says it's called a cook, cook. They're big. They're, they're from 6 to 12 inches long, if not longer. And they bite. And they poop in the house. You know, the poop falls down onto the tile floors. So uh, cleaning a house is not as easy uh, as you think it is. And also, you know, she's going to help you prepare your meals. She's going to help you shop. Uh, she's going to come by and check on you every morning that you fired her to come in to make sure you're well. And uh, living alone is a tough proposition, and it's good to have somebody coming in to check on you. And maids, you can get a maid anywhere between, you know, I'm going to say $7,000 a month to uh, $10,000, $15,000 a month, depending on what you need them to do and how many hours you need them to work. If it's a live-in or if it's uh, somebody who lives in the neighborhood who comes by uh, in the morning and then goes home after she prepares your evening meal. And remember one thing, guys, take a, a word from what my dad once told me. Don't sleep with the maid. Some of these maids could be beautiful and sexy and, and don't get taken in um, into having a relationship with an employee. You know, the same things hold true here as in the U.S. It's a sticky situation. You, you get into a relationship with the, with the help, with the maid, and uh, then when you want to break it off, uh, it's hard to break it off, you know, and then you lose some trust uh, there. Is she going to steal from you now because uh, you dumped her in the relationship? Is she going to have jealousy aspects later when you start dating other, other women? And just to go straight out and fire them, be very careful. Don't have relationships with the help. Uh, if you really do fall in love with this girl and you really do like this girl, take her off the payroll hire another maid and date her. The next type of girl that you guys should be looking for if you're coming to the Philippines are widows. Now, a lot of you guys have overlooked this, uh, this group of women, a classification of women if you want. They're widows. They've been married to American. They've been married to Brit. They've been married to a foreigner. And that foreigner is passed on. Now, you know, with the large age gaps here in the Philippines, it's it's a great chance that uh, the husband's going to pass and the wife is going to survive. She's going to get his assets. She probably has some property or a house or some money in the bank, maybe a car. Uh, she has some assets. So, so this is a group of women who are familiar with living with foreigners, who enjoy uh, older foreigners because they were married to one, and who would be interested in meeting another foreigner. You know probably remarrying. It's a hard thing to be married a long time and then be single by yourself. Uh, chances are their kids might be grown already. So take a look into the widows. You know, when you're on a dating app or, or even if you're here in person uh, going Tinder or anything else, look up the widows. I've met quite a few widows here in the Philippines, especially here in Dumaguete. They have assets, they have houses, they have businesses. Uh, they're well off, they're well spoken. 
So it's it's something people overlook. Everyone's looking for that province girl, that simple girl, you know, the younger girl. Well, maybe you don't really want a younger girl. Maybe you want somebody more established. And this woman would be able to have more conversations with you. Uh, she would be able to enjoy your company more. And you probably would enjoy her company more also. And she wouldn't be so dependent on your income. So it might be more of a uh, fair playing field financially between the two of you. So that's a group of women that is overlooked in all these bloggers and, and YouTubers talking about types of women you might be able to date. If you're not coming over here yet, guys, say you're four or five years out, three years out, whatever your plans are, and you do go on dating apps and you do look for women uh, who are available, take a look at OFWs. Now, an OFW is an overseas foreign worker. It's one of the major exports of the Philippines are people leaving the country to work overseas. They work in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia. They work in Korea. They work in Japan. Uh, they work in many different countries, especially in the Middle East and in Asia. There are some working in Canada, U.S., and in Europe. But there's far more working in uh, Asian countries and in the Middle, Middle East. Now, these women, they're on contracts. They might have two more years on their contract. Maybe you can meet somebody online that you really like, and you can coordinate your schedule to the end of her contract to when you're coming, you know, for a vacation, a visit, or to move, uh, to live here permanently. And these women, the advantage here is these women work for a living. They know the value of a dollar. They know that that hard work, uh, what hard work is and how hard it is to make money. You know, nobody gives you money. So they have a, a deep respect for money and family because you know why they're working overseas. They're sending money to their family. You know, some of these women might be widows. Some of them might be single moms. Uh, and they have children that their parents are taking care of. And they're working and sending the money to their family but also they're probably having a house built. They probably bought some land with this money they're making overseas. So you, you're stepping into a good situation. Don't overlook these hardworking women who are OFWs. You can find them on dating sites, you can find them on Facebook, you can find them through friends. And um, it's, it's a, don't like using the word classification, but it's a type of woman uh, that is revered here in the Philippines as a hardworking, family-oriented, dedicated person who is working overseas away from their family for years at a time to help support their family. And they know how hard it is to make money because they're working hard over there. You know, they're not working nine to five. They're working hard. Uh, most of them are domestics, either cooks, nannies, housekeepers, and um, they would appreciate a good man to come into their life. The last type Guys, they're in your backyard. If you're back in your home country, and I'm going to talk about the U.S. and Canada here because that's where I'm from, that area. They're in your backyard. Do you know how many Filipinos go to the U.S., go to Canada as teachers? They go there as nurses. They go there and, and work. You know, They get a job. They get a, a green card or they get a, visa for, a work visa, and they're in the U.S., they're in your community. They're, they're down the street from you. Uh, if you live in Las Vegas, you know, what is there? Almost 100,000 Filipinos, if not more. I don't know the, the total population anymore. But every major city has a large um, population of Filipinos. And these women, you can find a woman that's in your age group. You know, say you're, you're 40 and you're saying, wow, you know, in 15 years, I'll be ready to retire and I'm going to go to the Philippines. And while you're looking online and you're curious and you're interested, meet one of these women. And maybe, you know, you can connect. And maybe her goal is to work for 10 or 15 years and move back to the Philippines, buy some property and build a house. You can find, I call this the golden ticket, someone that's already in your home country. They're working. They're in the Social Security system. You know, they got enough porters in and they're contributing constantly into Social Security. So you're going to end up with a pension, uh, your own, and someday she'll have her own pension. 
and maybe you can, you know, you meet up, you like each other, you, you, you hook up and you, you get together and you decide to build towards a goal. And the goal might be marriage, build a house, buy a house in the, in the States, and then sell it before you come here to the Philippines, save your money together, take trips here to the Philippines and look at property. You'll get to know this girl very well and you won't have to worry about the quote scam aspect of meeting a woman and having her buy property with you and then leaving you and taking that property. They're in your backyard. You know, they work in casinos and they work in the service industry. They work as teachers. They work as in the medical field. So most of them have very good jobs. Most of them are educated and most of them are very, very good people. So don't overlook the Filipina that's in your backyard, that's working in your same community, single, uh, you know, looking for somebody nice. Marriage is not on their mind right now. Right now what's on their mind is working, making money, and preparing for their future. And if you can meet one of these girls and join your, your plans together, it would make for a great outcome. It's something I tried to do when I was younger, uh, but it didn't work out. Nothing, no guarantee anything's gonna work out in life. But don't overlook these women. Plus, before you come here, by dating Filipinas in the US or in Canada, in your home country, you get used to them. You'll get used to um, their culture, how they act, how you should act around them. And it'll give you a leg up on everybody else that's coming here. So don't overlook these four type of women. They're here in the Philippines. Some are the widowed that were married to foreigners before. And the foreigner died. You know, so they're used to a foreigner. They have some assets. Uh, they're probably looking for another foreign husband. The overseas worker, OFW, who works so hard all the time on these two, three year contracts abroad. They don't get a chance to come home except maybe on a holiday once in a while around Christmas. They have a hard life and they know the value of a dollar. They know the value of hard work. And maybe you can coordinate when their contract is done and you're moving to the Philippines. And that woman in the backyard, there's some many, many, many beautiful Filipinas that work in your home country. And if you're not interested in dating at all, if you have no interest in finding a wife or a long-term relationship, the maid is probably a way to go to have someone come in and take care of you, take care of everything that's in the house. Uh, you know, because it's totally different here when you move here. How, how we live here, how, how they cook here, shopping here, if you're going to do the market. Can you tell a fresh fish in the market from a fish that's a day old? I, I can't. Can you tell fresh chicken from non-fresh chicken without that bad smell? What if it's frozen? I can't tell. These women uh, shop all the time. They know the best deals and they'll be happy to do it for you. Of course, it's a salary situation. So guys, I'm here at Japanese Shrine. Good luck with your dating, guys. Until next time.